let's uh, look at this uh, practice question on utility theory okay so it is as state the expected utility theorem we can do that right so we are primarily uh, saying u of w which is uh, a function which is uh, representing the utility of a person as a function of wealth at a future date right we are talking about uh, the utility which an investor is going to derive as a function of his wealth for some future date and uh, the main intention is maximize the utility so maximization at whatever point the utility the expected value of this utility will get maximized that is uh, the typical behavior or the decision which an investor is going to prefer and obviously this is purely based on what investor is typically believing how he believes the future of or whatever are the outcomes that are going to come in the future as a part of his investment and what are the probabilities that are associated with each of those outcomes so basically in short it is nothing but it's a representation of the utility of the investor expressed in terms of his wealth for a future date the intention of an investor is to maximize the utility based on the belief that uh, uh, different kinds of outcomes are going to occur with different levels of probabilities so that is purely specific to the investor and what we really need to understand now is the four axioms on which the utility theorem is designed we know one is comparability now the the main intention of this is the investor should be able to compare the various outcomes that are coming out so he should be able to compare the various outcomes and finally say that it is uh, this particular outcome is his preference so the utility uh, theory is completely Uh, based on this particular axiom then we are talking about transitivity principle we know that uh, if an investor prefers a more than b and he prefers b more than c then it means that he prefers a more than c so this is a principle of transitivity theorem and uh, as a slight uh, extension to this we have a theorem called we have an axiom called certainty equivalence what is this typically saying in the same case if a is uh, preferred to b and b is preferred to c then there exists some unique probability unique probability b p wherein the investor will become indifferent between b and a gamble which will give a with a probability of p and will give c with a probability of 1 minus p now you see see normally he will prefer a over b he will prefer b over c but so if that is the case a is the most preferred c is the least preferred now what we are saying is a combination of a and c a combination of a and c chosen in such a way that there is a p probability of getting a and 1 minus p probability of getting c between this and this the investor is really indifferent to and this is where typically uh, for this particular gamble b is called as the certainty equivalent so which means uh, if there is some kind of a certainty if there is some kind of an outcome 
which is uh, prepared in the middle of the other two outcomes then the certain the, the middle one can definitely become a certainty uh, equivalent for some unique probability p which is a gamble of uh, uh, of generating a with some probability and c with some other probability then we have the fourth axiom that drives the utility which is the independence now it's as good as saying if there are two different uh, uh, investments a and b two different outcomes a and b if let's say an investor is completely indifferent between these two now what we are simply uh, saying is he will also be indifferent between another between a gamble which will give a with a probability of p and some other c with a probability of 1 minus p or which will give b with a probability of p and c with a probability of 1 minus p this typical principle is called as the principle of indif uh, independent now any expected utility uh, theorem that is typically uh, derived is based on these four underlying principles the comparability the transitivity the certainty equivalence and the independence right now explain the concept of non satiation non satiation for us is a very simple principle which is exhibited by every investor which is he wants to prefer more to less more is always preferred to less so which means in a in a mathematical form if i am expressing it is the first derivative of the utility function should always be an increasing function the first derivative should always be positive similarly when i am using the word risk aversion the investor will try to go with uh, taking an additional risk only if he is confirmed that the expected return that comes out of it is much higher so because for a risk averse investor the incremental increase in the wealth right increase in the wealth is less highly less highly preferred than an incremental decrease in the wealth an incremental increase in the wealth is not preferred much compared to an incremental decrease in the wealth so any risk averse investor he will reject a fair gamble he has to be paid something more if he has to really go for uh, if he has to really go for that investment which means the expected return should be greater than the risk free rate of return which is also telling me that the u double dash of uh, uh, u double dash of w should be less than 0 which means the utility function should be completely concave for a risk averse investor so if i have to test out for risk aversion i look out for u double dash of w less than 0 and you being concave if i am looking for non satiation i'll check if uh, u dash of w is positive right so this is how the two principles can very well be understood now a quadratic utility function is given by u of w equal to w plus b w square now just quickly we'll see what is u dash of w which is 1 plus 2 bw and u double dash of w is 2b okay the value of absolute risk aversion at a value of wealth of 1 for w equal to 1 the absolute risk aversion just recollect the formula the absolute risk aversion for us is nothing but minus u double dash of w by u dash of w so this is 0.25 so let me uh, write it what it is uh, minus 2b by 1 plus 2b w is going to be 0.25 when w is 1 
which means minus 2b plus 1 by divided by 1 plus 2b is equal to 0.25. So from here, minus 2b is equal to 0.25 plus 0.5b. So which is working out that 2.5b is equal to minus 0.25 and b is minus 0.1. So in this case, the value of b in this case is coming out to minus 0.1. The range over which the u satisfies the condition of non-satiation. If the non-satiation has to work, then it is 1 plus 2bw should be greater than 0. Now, B, we have already got it as minus 0.1. So, 1 minus 0.2W is greater than 0. So, this gives me 1 should be greater than 0.2W or W should be less than 1 by 0.2, which is 5. So, W should be less than 5. So, as long as the wealth is less than 5, it is exhibiting a principle of non-satiation. So this is how uh, a typical practical example based on the utility of uh, function working out for non-satiation, absolute risk aversion can be worked out. Alright.